Okay, so this is Gosu Gamers Weekly number 18. This is Splice versus Luxury Watch Grand Finals from this past weekend. This is probably one of the first or second tournaments on the new patch, and one of the first, or like one of the only games that you get to see the Koreans play against North American teams. These were all on the North American server though, so keep that in mind. I'm joined today by Jason Kaplan. I'm doing this off stream for the first time. So as always, let me know if you have any feedback. Let him know if you have any feedback. Let us both know if you have any feedback. But more importantly, let's learn some Overwatch and get right into it. Our Korean squad in luxury watch. So we so are... Off the bat, I just want to bring something up for you. We're seeing Nanohana on Pharah, right? Mm -hmm. And Pharah's really hard to play on high ping. I don't know if it matters so much as far as that, because the game has really weird network interactions, where I think like it's mostly client-side. And the rockets are pretty fast, and it might just be more of a spam thing more than anything. Um, defensive fire though isn't something that you see every day. They might have their own plan. Maybe they just really want to spam the rockets into that one choke, or they don't really have any need for the direct rockets. It's... Well, can we pause here? Yeah. Because I'm looking, like, I think you're, you hit like a really good point on the defensive side. It's look at what they have tank wise, right? They don't have like a really good comp in my mind to hold high ground easily. Like, they have a Winston who wants to jump in. And if you look on the side of Spice, what they have like a, a Zenyatta, right? Or obviously, as you can see, Shrugger playing Genji. And they actually already played a series against each other before in the winner bracket finals, before the grand finals here. Isn't that, isn't that odd, though, to see like a Winston Zarya on defense of Nabani? Some teams will do this. It's, it's like an aggressive defense. Once you get a pick, you can just get more picks. The Winston is good in general just because you have the bubble. It's just you have to... You kind of put yourself in a weird position where you have to make something happen with this Winston, or he's just going to get killed. The, maybe they expect the Shrugger Genji, and they just want a direct answer to it immediately, and that was their thought process here. They're not running a Lucio. Neither team's running a Lucio, which I think is kind of a bad idea if you're spliced right now, because you're running this double tank setup, and all your heals are going into this uh, one Mercy. So, like, from one perspective, it's kind of bizarre from Luxury Watch, but it's also... I feel like it's also equally as bizarre from Splice because I don't particularly like the idea of the Genji Reinhardt comp. I think like if you're gonna run Genji, you should just be running a Winston with it, and then getting rid of the McCree and like putting in a Tracer or something. I don't like Genji Reinhardt comps for the most part. I mean, the Europeans do it a lot, but on offense on this map specifically, you need like a high ground hero. They're running the Diva, but they have the Zarya on the other side. Like from a comp perspective, I think that Luxury Watch has the advantage. But it's only because they have like somewhat of a plan, I guess. Like they have the Winston and the Zarya. Those two heroes together should be fine. Like there's not really a good easy way for them to kill either of them on the side of Splice. I, I look at Splice and I feel like to me they're they're expecting a very standard game, right? They're gonna go up on the high ground towards the left, and they're using the Reinhardt Shield and Diva to actually exit that room. And they're using the Genji to like maybe be a distraction towards the side or pick off any flankers, or not flankers, but people off towards the right hand side of the upper of the upper ground. But like Luxury Watch aren't playing standard at all, and I think that's going to completely catch Splice off when we get into this first attack. Yeah, and I think that Splice is just putting themselves in a bad position regardless. Like, even against the standard comp of, like, a Reinhardt, Zarya, maybe McCree, and you'll see, like, May sometimes, you'll see Junkrat sometimes, you'll see Torbjorn sometimes. I like defensive Winston on this map. I like offensive Winston just as much, though, and I think... Like, it's if their first push goes pretty bad on Splice, I think that they put themselves in a really rough position because... You don't have the speed to get back. This is one of the farther points from like spawn to get to the first point for the offense, I think, in the game. Between like this and maybe like Dorado, once you wind up in that first like up the ramp area. It's you, you don't you need speed boost and you need to make these transcendences work, but you have a comp that relies on Genji being off on his own. I don't know. It's we'll see what happens, but it's it's an interesting comp for sure from Luxury Watch. The thing is, we've had Awesome Guy playing on Winston before in like the earlier series, and he's an amazing Winston as well. And I think you put out one of your other videos, like how damn effective he is and how different he plays Winston. Yeah, he uses it to initiate, which most teams don't. I'm also surprised that they're taking this up for like pretty uncontested. But the spam coming out is a lot. Like they have a lot of spam. They have this Farrah spam. They have the Winston. Farrah's is going to go straight on Shane, and this is really good play. Shane gets caught out, and I don't really know that like this push should just fail now on the side of Splice. Yeah, I think most teams that attack initially here, get, like, I assume to get stopped here on the high ground, not actually knocked off. And without that giant shield out of Shana's Ghost, it's like, well, what's your defense going to hide behind anymore at this rate? And we see Ninja already being taken down. But Clockwork, he must have done work, though, because he already has his ultimate ready. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna pause for a second. I don't know why they decided to go from upper and then fall. It, it's like their comp just doesn't make sense to me. I, like I, I'm gonna keep saying it, but if you're running this Reinhardt up on the high ground, you like the Diva doesn't make use of the Reinhardt shield because you're not doing damage from range as Diva. You're putting a lot of pressure on Clockwork. Like he's the only one that can really do damage, and that's like kind of why you see him have his ult here. Because there's no one else really that makes use of that Reinhardt shield. Like, you saw the Reinhardt fall down and got immediately punished by the Pharah. So maybe that was their plan. It's also kind of cutesy that you, like, you can make some cute plays with the conk. Like, if they come up on that high ground, you can conk the back wall and knock some of them down. And then once they're down, it's like a feeding pit for the McCree and the Zarya and the Winston. So that might actually just be their strategy. I don't know if we got to see that or if that maybe yeah, that's, that's why he fell down. Goes. Yeah, so that's happening to Shane. So... Off. I didn't know he got knocked out, that he just fell, but it makes sense. Like, this Farah kind of makes sense in that regard. It kind of just knocks people off the top, and it's reliable. There's not many other reliable spells for knocking people out. But I still think that Splice is putting themselves in a rough position here by just running this Genji. Like, I think you just come in here with a Winston and a Tracer or something and get behind, but... I like this Farah. I'm seeing, like, I didn't know why the Farah was good, but now I'm, I like kind of understand why it's good. And it's literally, you just knock them off the top, and what are they going to do about it? I just wonder how long it's going to last, though, because it's it seems like a one off thing, right? You can hit a concussive blast, but now they have so since they have a, a sickness on D.Va, you just defense matrix it out. No one gets knocked off. And then you have to depend on Pine to really kind of step up or obviously awesome guy and be able to both jump on top of the actual part. But Neil Hana, he has barrage available and Spice. I mean, they don't have res. They most likely should not have it come into the fight since it's more of an explosive area. I don't really see them dragging out a fight here. Well, so let's pause. Like, I want to talk about something that was important, too. Okay. Um... Sickness actually misplayed here pretty hard. He was on the D.Va, and he could have just dove off the map and died and respawned with his suit up. But what happened was he died, lost his suit, and then I think he went, he walked all the way back to spawn in the small D.Va form and then had to switch heroes to get his suit back. Because if he had jumped off the map, then it would have delayed their push again. So now he's actually completely reset his ult. And now whatever he had before, I don't know how much it was, but I'm sure it was higher than 6%. He's, it's just gone now. Not that Diva ult's really that big of a deal on this push, but him losing it, um, that's really detrimental, I think, to this. And again, like, they're going to take this high ground. The conk can even hit the ceiling. Like, the, blocking the conk with the defense matrix is a pretty tall order. And you don't even really care if they control the high ground or don't get conked off because you have... Like, they don't have damage, right? Like, them taking this high ground, the only person that can get a kill is clockwork from this position so are you really scared right now if you're on the side of luxury watch i don't like i don't think so yeah i mean even if you're shrugger who do you kill when exactly there's a winston there to chase you there's a zarya there's a mercy and the high noon comes in and immediately awesome guy just jumps in and pops the shield and the high noon gets canceled i'm more impressed that neohana didn't get more of his barrage actually blocked off by by sickness there I think, I don't know if it was cooldown or what. And see, he just knocks Shane right off the top. And, like, that's, it's just such a good play because there's no real counter to it. I think Sh Splice needs to go back to the drawing board and switch their comp up a little bit. He gets a little cocky there and goes in on Clockwork, but I don't know that it's that big of a deal because Clockwork's just stuck here in no man's land now. He's so delayed now, too. Yeah, if they kill him here, that's really bad, but then he gets out. A little aggressive from Nanohana, but it really doesn't matter. And that goes back to them not having the Lucio. Like, their whole team just has to walk back in here, and now Biom has the Graviton. So as long so as I he mean, gets a decent Graviton, they're okay. Even even with the Lucio, though, do you think a Lucio is going to change this? Because I think, yeah, as you've been mentioning, it's just a, a basic comp setup that's really not going to work out for them unless they get lucky. Yeah, I mean, it's more or less like in times like those where you get the picks, you don't really have the best way to deal with them. The good news here is that they have the Dragon Blade, and the Dragon Blade got a lot done. I didn't expect it to get that much done because I expected the Pharah to be able to live and the Transcendence to come out. But since they killed Arcane early, they didn't even get the res off either. So like both supports still have ult on the side of Luxury Watch, which I think is kind of bizarre to me. Like that neither of them got their ults off. If not mistaken, actually, Arcane and Starkey both got Earth Shatter too. Yeah, so that was there. yeah, so that was it was just like a lot of really good plays from like they made their composition work, but should it have worked? Like I don't know. In reality, I think that both of the supports should have been up on the high ground, like completely not able to ever be earth shattered. I think that they ran away from Shrugger was Dragon Blade, so like they popped the Dragon Blade, they baited them onto the point, and then they earth shattered them. But the fact that both of them got earth shattered, like that really shouldn't happen. I think that's more of a mistake on their side rather than more so of like a great play from Splice. 
But it splice made it work. And now that the, now that they have this position, that first point's kind of like I would say probably the harder one to cap between the two. If you can cap the first point, you're in a decent spot to cap the second one. Like the second one's definitely easier than capping the first. So now they have the Reinhardt, they have the Diva, they have a very tanky lineup that can thrive on the cart. And since it's about pushing the cart now instead of standing on the point, I think that their lineup does a little bit better. I, I kind of think as well that Shane hit a charge. On, he hit a charge on the awesome guy, which I think maybe forced Luxury Watch we can to go, actually we can go react. Back. We can go back. Oh, no, you don't. I mean, you don't have to, but I know he hit a charge on him, but I, I thought maybe that's what kind of forced Arcane and Starkey to like, well, crap, we need to try to save him, right? Because he didn't even have Prama Rage up at that time, or it was like just ended. Because he got knocked down to like 50, 100 HP, and it kind of forced them to like change things up. But yeah, so I'm here. I'm here on Beyond's POV, and it looks like Pine just kills Clockwork. Then the Dragon Blade comes out and kills Pine. But somewhere, Starkey just took a massive chunk of his HP out, so he's just gonna go down. He falls on the point, and there it is. Like both of the supports fall down to dodge the Dragon Blade, and they instantly get Earth Shattered. And I think that that had something to do more so with the fact that Biom had already used his shield to try to save the support. I think he tried to save it on the Mercy before, but Awesome Guy had already also popped the Primal Rage, so he doesn't have the shield to drop on the point right now. So it's just like a, it's like a, it's like a chain reaction of like uh. really bad events for the side of Luxury Watch. Like they were in a really good position, but then this double Earth Shatter gets both of their supports with ults. Like that's something that you can't really rely on. They made it work, but. I would say it was more fluky than well executed. Yeah, I did notice actually awesome guy pop primary reach after the charge. Yeah, so he lives, but they don't have the way to like there's there's no there's absolutely no way for them to block the earth shatter at that point. That's what's like frustrating about Overwatch in general. Like you could have a completely superior comp in like every way and superior ultimates, but like just one crucial kill or one slight mistake can lose you a fight like that. Yeah. Like you said, both supports getting caught with an earth shatter. Even Nanohana here, he could have died. Like, he just lived with, like, 4 HP, and if he had died there, they would have had no defense for this next point. I'm liking the D.Va, I think I think the Sickness playing D.Va was, like, a direct response to uh, Nanohana playing Pharah earlier. Well, they both in, like, the spawned series. on it, but, yeah, maybe maybe they knew that the Pharah was coming and they just wanted to deal with it. It's also good against the Winston, is another thing. Like, if you're going to run the D.Va, you can deal with Winston pretty well. He jumps in, you can just cut through his armor. You don't take much damage from Winston because of the damage block from the armor. And it's just a good hero in general. It's just not running Zarya is kind of rough, I would say. And I would almost say that it might be smarter to run... I don't know, their comp is all over the place a little bit. Like, this Genji really doesn't have much of a follow-up, you know? It's like a Genji yeah. comes in and then what? You have, like, a D.Va over the top? Not really. So I'll pause right here to talk about ults. Um, they keep running Mercy, this Splice team, they've been running Mercy a majority of their games. Ninja Nick was like a really good medic in TF2, they have a lot of TF2 players on their team. Awkward Pure, Shrugger, Ninja Nick, Sickness, like everyone's played TF2, I don't know if Shane has, but it doesn't matter at that point. The point is like, he's used to the idea of the Mercy Beam, and they play around it more so than other teams, and I think it almost, like it's to a fault sometimes, because You'll see a lot of teams will lose games it's like solely because a Mercy died first in a fight. And sometimes it's like just actually not possible to protect your Mercy. Like he has such a hard time right now because you can take spam rockets from Nanohana, Pine can hit you with long range, and then like awesome guy just will f like find you, you know? <laughs> so it's it's rough, I think, and the entire basis of their pushes succeeding, I think, comes down to his res usage and Arcane's res usage. So I don't that's I guess one of the I don't know what the word is. Like one of the things I don't like about the meta is when it comes down to these mercy versus mercy engagements, it really just comes down to which one lives more so than which team executed their ults correctly. Like if you look right now, Luxury Watch has all their ults, like they're all ready, except for I guess Zarya and the Winston, but you have Barrage, you have Trans, you have High Noon. And all you have really is High Noon on the side of Splice. It looks like they just use the Diva Mech or the Mech's coming down, but it doesn't matter how well you use all of your ults as long as the Mercy can live. I mean, and, and even based off what the comp is about, Spice doesn't have a, an engaging composition to go up against uh, Luxury Arch Red, Red. And where Red has, obviously, the Barrage, the, the Winston to jump in with the Zarya Shield, it's kind of, I think, hard to make a, a Mercy effective there. Well, the thing is, you don't need so much the engage comp when you're pushing because, like, they have to come to you, you know? Like, they have to stop the cart. Like, the burden's on them to take the fight to you, not for you to take the fight to them. If they're completely content right now just deathballing on the cart, 
and they have a pretty decent lineup for it. As long as Nanohana doesn't sneak around and get like a sneaky barrage off, Pure and Clockwork should have more than enough damage. The barrage is also really hard to hit against this comp because like you can reflect it with the Genji, you can eat it with the Matrix, or like a Re if you're too low, the Reinhardt can like kill you on your own barrage by like putting the shield up. So Nanohana has a he's in a tough spot right now. Beyond is they don't have a good hero aside from Awesome Guy to like take advantage of the Zarya bubbles. And they don't have the best, they don't have speed here. Like, neither team has speed, and I think that that kind of favors the team attacking just because the cart's giving you that extra heal. So, the Genji also can chase you. The Like, I don't know. It, it's, I don't know why both teams opted not to run a Lucio, and they feel like this Mercy Zen is better. But I feel like a Lucio might have toppled this in either team's favor. For me, it's like, why why stick to the Pharah here, then? If you're going to have such a tough time making a Barrage successful, are they just sticking to it because he has Barrage? Well, I think, just just cause he, I think it's just because he's confident, you know? Like, sometimes, and I think that the Euro, I think the American scene, I don't know if this is, like, a complete, like, Korean or Asian scene kind of thing, but if, the, like, the Euros, Genji wasn't really meta during the ESL Atlantic tournament. It was just, it became meta as the tournament went on because the teams that had the best Genjis just kept running it. And the teams that couldn't run it just never ran it. So if you have someone that's good enough at a hero to make it work even in like bad situations, I think you should do it. Like, for, like I, I'm noticing right now a lot of teams aren't opting for Tracers because like they think Tracer's a bad hero. But I think it also has to do with just like a fear of playing it incorrectly and stuff. Like if Nanohana is confident enough to play the Pharah, then like why not just play the Pharah? It, he's up against a comp that, in theory, should, like, destroy him. But if they can kill the McCree, it's the same with a Tracer. Like, if you have a Tracer against the McCree, if the McCree dies, you just have a Tracer, like, all over the place. And right there, you saw him get a few rockets off. I think he killed Clockwork and Ninja Nick. Like, he just came out of nowhere, hit a rocket or two. And, like, that was enough for them. It's one of those things where you feel like you should be able to beat it. But once it starts beating you... You actually lose control of the game because you feel like you should have you should have the answer to it already in your deck. You know, like sometimes you'll lose a fight and you'll be like, "Oh, our comp's bad. We need to switch the comp." But here, when you're when you have the better comp in your head and you're still losing fights, it really starts like messing with your brain and can really start like slowing down your understanding and like your confidence for the next fight. It's also, I think, a lot of pressure on Clockwork here too because who's gonna deal with the fair? Like in terms of Minus ultimates, Clockwork is basically the man to deal with her because yeah, Shrugger can hit a couple of shurikens, maybe dash in, maybe overcommit because of that. But then you have Awesome Guy who can jump in, uh, Neohana still spamming rockets, and Beyond who can kind of assist from the back lines. That like, Clockwork doesn't really have, I think, necessarily a really easy time to deal with them. No, he, he doesn't. And that, a little bit with Zen, but yeah, and I guess that goes back to like me thinking that the comp doesn't make so much sense. Like, if you want to run this, like Clockwork's actually a really good tracer. Like, why not just put him on the tracer? Like, Pure can play Lucio, Ninja Nick can play Lucio. You might as well go for a more, what's the word, like, safe? Or just, like, a more aggressive composition against a team that doesn't have a Lucio on defense? Like, if you can get in with a Tracer and a Winston and a Genji on their Mercy or their Zenyatta, do they really have the heals to keep them alive or, like, the positioning? Not really. Like, you can't protect Arcane or Starkey from a Tracer right now. You just have Pine. But if Pine has to deal with a Genji, a Winston, like... You can overload defenses, and they're not really doing that. And Anohana, like, you're not going to hit rockets consistently against Genji, Winston, Tracer. Like, it's just not going to happen. So it just goes back to them stubbornly running this comp, which I don't think is the play. Like, the, what's the D.Va really going to accomplish? You're just going to feed this Beyond ult. Like, Beyond Zarya is going to keep having ult. You're not really ever going to kill Awesome Guy. You can, like, negate some of his damage, but you're not going to... You shouldn't ever really kill him. And any time that you do damage to this Winston and he doesn't die, you just charge up Arcane's Mercy Res like that much faster. And I you feel like even a Roadhog for yeah, Sickness yeah. would actually be really good here because yeah, awesome anything. Guy yes, that. yes. Like that's what I mean. It's like their comp doesn't they, like all of their damage is on Clockwork right now. All of it. If Clockwork dies, they don't get any kills in theory because they all they have is like I don't know Orb of Discord and then a Diva. Like, is that really that scary? Awesome guy's gonna be all over Shrugger. Like. Awesome guys, Winston is not going to give him room. Beyond's going to be on him. Pine's going to be on him. Like, Pine doesn't miss. Beyond's playing really well, and he has ult all the time, so you can't play into that. Like, they need to switch something up, and I'm not sure why they're so stubborn about this. Like, he just used res, and it lost them the fight anyway. 
And now they're in an even worse position because they're trying to fight in the streets without a Lucio, but they have Transcendence, but, like, you're not going to walk your team in. Like, it's very hard to walk at people in this game, and I think that that's where I think the strength of the Lucio is. I love the confidence in Neohana, too, because he's... He's constantly not allowing them to feel comfortable either. He's just trying to throw a couple of rockets in, even when they're spawning back in where he could potentially be caught out. And even with the Graviton Surge coming in there, he still just tries to focus on the back line. He, he knows the targets he needs to hit in priority. And every time you see him ever, I think, play right now is he's always going for the highest priority target every time. And, he, and he's always able to spot it out as well. Yeah, and I mean, to build off that, I didn't even talk about this either, is that how do they kill Arcane if he's in the air? Like, how do you kill the Mercy when he's floating around? Like, you're seeing now, Sickness decides, oh shit, we need a way to kill this Para. We need more damage, and he goes to the 76. And that's more or less, I think, because he's not a Tracer player, Sickness. Like, he's more of an off-tank. But I, I, would even, I wouldn't even mind a Zarya here. Just something to make Shrugger better, or make Clockwork better. But the 76, now you're running triple heals, your damage still isn't that good, and, like, 76 gets kind of shredded by Winston, too. So... You're not really solving a problem, you're just kind of making it less scary, I guess. Because Nenohana now has to worry about the attack visor, and so does Arcane, but there's so many corners to hide here that getting line yeah. of sight isn't the easiest of things to do. I feel like Spice is just super squishy here, too. Like, you got, yeah. I mean, yeah, they're triple healing, right? But you don't have the utility out of a Lucio, you don't have the utility of a Zarya, most importantly, or like the kill potential of a Roadhog. Yeah, but at the same time, like you play professionally, you know how hard it is in the heat of the moment to like realize what's wrong and what's needed to be to be switched. I guess. Well, yeah, and this was also right after a new patch, so like they might just be trying to force. They think like, oh, I saw Envy or I think it was like C9. I I, I know I did analysis where I think it was C9 versus Phase, and they both ran Mercy Zen, and C9 had a lot of success with it. But your team has to die in a certain way, and your comp has to be good when you res. There's there's like this weird thing I think right now in the game where teams haven't realized that you need a comp that's resable, and some comps just aren't resable. Like if you res a Zarya, she'll live. If you res a Reaper, he'll always live. If you res a Winston, they'll live, right? If you res like a 76, he has to just run. Like he, he doesn't like have like an escape, he doesn't have any way to make himself harder to hit, he doesn't have like a deflect, like Genji's good to res, McCree's not that good because if you res McCree in the middle of people, he just gets insta-gived. Like Tracer you can res and like Reinhardt even then is really hard because if they res a Reinhardt you can like surround him and stuff and then suddenly it's not that good. So if you're running comps with heroes like 76 and McCree, do you really want res at that point? Like do you really think that there's ever going to be a time where you're going to res a, Rein a McCree and a 76 and like get value out of it? Especially against a Barrage, against a High Noon, against a Black Hole, against a Winston. Like I would really prefer an Ana. Even over the Mercy, I would prefer a Zenyatta or a Lucio over the Mercy. It's just, re it's going to be really hard for Ninja Nick to ever get anything done. And it's also because he's playing a hero that's kind of designed for the air, but he doesn't have any, like, air superiority on his team. He doesn't have the extra form of mobility at the moment. And he doesn't have the best tanks to heal. Like, look at their comp, just, like, this is just, like, a sh completely strategical and, like, meta kind of analysis. But, like, look at their comp on Splice. They have... Of all of most of their team has sub 250 health like everyone's at 200 i think except for the reinhardt you're running three healers and your biggest health pool is like one hero that doesn't want to take damage so if the winston the zarya and the farah can burst through the 200 health like you're not getting the heals in you're healing and you have too much heal for the lack of hp that you're running right so it's like I don't. It doesn't make sense to me. And they're like effectively building ult percent because of that. Yeah, you like if you have the diva, you can build res with the diva. You can build res with a Winston. Like maybe they just don't run a run a Winston. Look how scared they are here as well. Because like, they have to be right. Like who's killing this Winston right now? Like who on their team can actually kill him? And the, the answer is like nobody. And Ninja just res as well in the beginning of that fight because they lost one man. Realizing look how long he's alive right now. This Winston, like he's just running around now. Nanohana's going in, and since the Winston's in on the McCree, like the McCree can't kill the Farah it's just like uh they're hurting themselves more than anything i think with like these comps I, I wouldn't say that this like don't get me wrong luxury watch is playing really well and their comp makes a lot of sense and they're executing like perfectly but they're not i feel like splice isn't really putting themselves in a position to succeed like now they're going to the winston like where was this before and like why is clockwork still on mccree it's you're not going to get, like, you can, I guess the McCree's okay because you deal with the Pharah, but they should have had this Winston a long time ago, I think.
But now it's almost too late because Arcana is res again. They have Starkey's Transcendence. You don't even really care. Really challenge the, black, the back line. See, uh, finally, uh, look at this, look at this. Like, finally, he switches to Winston, and instantly he gets a priority pick on Pine. He gets a priority kill on Arcane. And like, if he had done this before, who knows how? Like, they didn't even use alts to do this. Like, they use a Dragon Blade. It looks like right now they're using it, but that didn't get them the kills, and the High Noon didn't get them any kills. So they all they really needed to do was get a Winston in and like play the deathmatch game because like as good of aim as Pine has, like Clockwork has probably just as good. Well, Most importantly, Arcane does go down as well to six as two here without actually having the res. It could have been a five or a four man res right there. Yeah, or technically five if Pond But that's what I mean. Like they don't have any disengage on the side of LW Red. They were just relying on the fact that Splice didn't have any engage. But since they switched to a, an engage hero in the Winston, like it, you saw how easy it was actually for them to take that fight because they jump in with a Winston. What's your response? You have a Pharah that's shooting at the bubble now. You have a McCree that can't really do all that much damage when the Winston has orb on him. And if the Pine's getting shot at by Clockwork and by uh, Sickness at that point, then like he's going to go down. And once he goes down, you don't really want to solo res him. So then it puts Arcane in a position where he doesn't know what to do because he can't really live anymore. And he like he has nowhere to hide because they're, they like expended so many resources on that McCree. So they tried to keep Pine alive, they failed, and then suddenly Arcane dies. But again, they don't have a Lucio to like get back. They have no real answer to the Winston. And they had no answer to the Winston in the beginning. It's just it took Splice way too long to realize that. I'm still confused how Arcane actually died there. I'm imagining that there was he a was, dead he was taking he, Well, he was taking Shrug Arcane. Arcane was taking Shurikens in the back from uh, Shrugger. And then... That's why I'm amazed, because I would assume he would stay with Nanohana in the air, but I was assuming maybe like a dead I killed Nanohana, which forced Arcane to be on the ground then? Yeah, I don't know. I, Arcane was on the ground probably trying to keep Pine alive. I don't know what happened. I think Pine got jumped with the Winston, and then... Arcane went to go heal Pine, but Shrugger came in from the back, and then he just kind of got pinched. Like this area here as well is is really hard. I mean, you can completely correct him here. It's really hard to play Winston on attack because everyone's so clumped together that I feel like you're just it's too easy to kill a Winston that jumps in when you're in the entire of the enemy team. You you kind of depend on like jumping on two three people in the back line, not an entire team in such an enclosed area. But I mean, there's no Reaper to go up against him or anything, or even a Roadhog. Yeah, so it's like he has. To yeah, he's not. He's not going to die super fast. Like both teams have a decent hard, a decently hard time killing tanks. That's a pretty bad transcendence though, right here coming out, and like they're over committing. This is something that teams do, I think, and it's a huge mistake. Like you see, Pure drop the transcendence because he wants to like keep his team alive, but Clockwork already died. And then, since Clockwork's dead, like, that's a majority of your damage. You're not going to cap through the map right now with your team. Because your main damage is dead. And since your main damage is dead, you don't have... you don't Like, there's actually no way for them to kill Awesome Guy anymore. Like, they actually just should not ever be able to kill Awesome Guy. As long as the Winston's alive, they won't... Like, there's no fear on the side of Luxury Watch. Because that Winston is like everything like you need a team wipe to cap through a map in general so by them earth shattering here it might just be because the clock is so not in their favor they know that they can't really afford to lose this fight but you're seeing the panic and the lack of time really come into play here when they're dropping that earth shatter when they don't have any real way to follow it up and ninja nick goes down to pine i think he flanked from upper and came down behind them he used a dead eye i think that's what forced pure to actually use a transcendence because he didn't want to get picked off in the dead eye yeah so pine must have just came in behind and forced out two ults and like that's ginormous for them because now look how bad of a position splice is in for this push like beyond still has black hole and pine's just in the back switch, shooting though. clockwork just went to tracer yeah because he has to get back to the fight fast but i feel like he should have just been on tracer the entire time pine lived with like two hp there and there's, not, there's nothing you really do. Ten seconds left. There's a Graviton Surge out of BM. You're, you're depending on Shrugger to touch the payload at this rate, and it I has to be it. There's just no way Splice can even touch the payload at this rate. Yeah, it's it, it's just like a comp thing, too. I, like, I don't know that Splice played poorly. I think that they just like never really gave themselves a chance to play well. Like, you have to deal with the Winston. You know that the Winston's coming. You might as well just run the Reaper at the beginning. You can even run, like, May against shit like that. Like, you can freeze the Winston. You can do whatever you want, but... Even Zarya is not bad there though. Like at first point. Yeah, I don't like it either. Attack. I would say I'd say Zarya is not bad. The Diva is not bad either. 
It's just you need a way to kill the supports that don't have a Lucio with them. Like if you speed boost in a Winston onto a Zenyatta and a Mercy, like you can do so much work. And you're gonna see here that the Luxury Watch comes out with a Lucio and they're like, they realize like, hey, speed boost is really good. Let's just make Awesome Guy even better. And like if they play around this Winston, they can do so much work. Their comp is also still a little bizarre. I guess it makes a little bit more sense. They have like, I wanna say like two sets of teams with this comp. I don't really know how to explain it. So it's like on two fronts. They got the Winston and the Genji to jump in somewhere. They've got the yeah, it's like Reinhardt, McCree, Lucio, Zen. But Zen can assist in both parties. Yeah, it's like you have a shield to protect your Zenyatta and your McCree, and then you have like a Winston, Lucio, Genji that are like kind of self-sufficient. So it's like an interesting dual front setup where you have one team, you have like a team, like you have the A team, which is like the all-in team, and then you have like the B team that sits in the back and like shoots from behind. It has a lot of synergy. It makes sense. It's not super all in. It's not super safe, but it's like somewhere in between. There's no Zarya, which is interesting, but Zarya, I think, is a little too clunky for this first point on offense in general because um, you have to get a good black hole, and there's not really many opportunities because teams are generally split amongst the high ground and the low ground, and if a res comes off. Like, you want heroes that can get in the back and find the supports. So I like the idea of the Genji Winston. Awesome Guy is just too good, I think, to take him off this hero. And I've actually seen them switch beyond to the Zarya because they know that Awesome Guy does enough work that they don't even need the Reinhardt. It, there's, their teamwork is very different in the way that they approach the game. Most teams don't switch their Reinhardt with their Zarya. They're like, they'll switch the Winston with the Zarya and like keep Reinhardt as like that set tank. But this team doesn't seem to care about that. But you'll it see... Me. Yeah, it's. Well, I mean, it's just different, right? It's like, if they're making it work, it like... It scares you when you're on splice because you haven't seen it before. In your head, you think it shouldn't work, and then it works. And it's it's kind of the same way I think teams are approaching the triple tank setups that we're seeing now more often. It's like you have to really think outside the box of how to beat it. Like your default Genji, not Genji, your default like McCree Tracer Zarya stuff or McCree Reaper Zarya stuff isn't working, and you have to like go back and figure out why it's not working. It's like stuff like this. It's like this Winston's destroying you and you feel like you have a good answer to Winston, but you don't even. I, I, Splice again is like throwing me off because why wouldn't you run a Reaper? Or why wouldn't you run a McCree? Like how do you actually kill Awesome Guy with this comp? I mean, we'll find out, I guess, but. I'm worried though, is that I, I think Luxury Watch is actually assuming Splice isn't gonna run a Lucio again. Because oh. if they're gonna run that, like the two comp setup with like the Lucio Genji and the Winston trying to jump onto a split team they have no way to get away from you right they don't have the boop they don't have the speed to get away so i think they're baking on the fact that are banking on the fact that spice just isn't going to go for a lucio yet again yeah i mean this happens this happens in their other match against ts mitt like teams just run defense like running defensive strat even just running strats in general without a lucio especially on defense i think is super punishable by an offensive lucio and i would expect them to have a decent hold splice on the first point if they can get something going but they again they're running triple heals with like a zarya like zarya the zarya winston genji has to get a lot done and i'm still not sure that they have a really reliable way to kill awesome guy it's a matter of whether or not defense lives though at the end of the day like if defense can survive the brunt force of this attack of like the winston genji with their own winston genji then they'll be fine but they also have the damage amp from the Zenyatta, which I guess is a big deal. If you're not going to run your own Zenyatta, then... Well, this is also putting a lot of pressure again on Clockwork for this team. Like, you have damage amp for him, and you have the Discord out of Pure. So whoever he hits, he's going to hit really hard, right? And he's hoping that Shrugger is going to be the one to help clean it up, and Shane is the person to kind of set up the initial kill to allow Shrugger to get these resets. Yeah, it's a matter, though, of if Awesome Guy can get on Clockwork. If Awesome Guy gets on Clockwork, then I don't know how they deal with Nanohana. They lose so much damage too. I mean, just the fact that he has someone on him, but he's running away from him, most likely, right? Yeah. And this that flashbang was actually huge. Awesome guy goes down. I'm not sure what happened. I'm a, I guess I'll pause. I saw them come through the choke. I guess Clockwork just. Mm, I don't know who did that. I guess Shrugger went in really hard and hit some headshots because he's at 50% ult, which doesn't make sense to me. I guess he must have done a bulk of that damage to the um, Winston that just died. But that was bizarre. I guess he got bubbled and just went in and hit shots. I mean, you don't expect that. But Shrugger's already at 50% ult. He's going to go down here to Pine. 
But I actually thought that Pine was gonna kill Shane because Shane came like Shane got flashbanged immediately and then got right click down. But Sickness also I think is a decent charge because uh, Pine just wound up shooting a bunch of bullets into the Zarya bubble. It's also important here to kind of talk about who has the advantage after that flashbang, right? So you, you flashbang up Shane as Ghost and you put them behind on total HP, like when it comes to fighting, right? Which means that in either Ninja or Pure has to focus healing onto him. Mm -hmm. I think maybe if also guy didn't jump in and die right there and maybe feed up so much ultimate to Shrugger or maybe if Shrugger didn't get so lucky, that already would have given a lot of momentum over Luxury Watch and that would have been Spice fighting back from like the back foot. And I think his defense, I think a lot of pressure comes on your defense to pick up like an initial kill. I mean, yeah, you have the defending side, but as you mentioned before, Nambani is like one of the longest. Oh yeah, you need you need from. those kills. Every kill that you get on defense is like a reset for your yep. hold. It's the thing with this comp, which is interesting to me, is like there's they're also playing it on two fronts where they literally they're just putting a lot of resources into Clockwork, and then they're using the Zenyatta to heal people across the way. So like Pure's gonna sit up on this top left ledge while the Winston Genji Zarya deal with the right ledge, and then any time that that Win or the Reinhardt shield from Beyond goes down, Clockwork's just gonna pump damage amped 76 bullets into them with like a Discord orb potentially on someone else. So as long as the right side, like this hold with the Winston Zarya doesn't die, it'll make enough space for Clockwork to like have a really decent hold. The scary part is though, once the ults start coming in from LW Red, because they make a lot out of their Primal Rages, they get a lot out of their High Noons, they play around their cooldowns very well. And if they can't get a res off from Ninja Nick, then they're going to be in a really bad spot. And this goes back to something you said, if you want to pause real quick, because of the two squads at a Luxury Watch, so, so we mentioned, like, assuming it went the way we talked about of the Winston paired in with the Genji, paired in with the Lucio. If those three get on top of Clockwork on Soldier who can heal, Pure who can heal people, and Ninja Nick who can heal people, I think it's really hard to focus one person down in the midst of that. Yeah. And when you're, you're Genji and Winston are kind of focused over there, you have, what, Sickness, you have Shana's Ghost, and you have Shrugger to focus on a Reinhardt, a McCree, and a Zen. And obviously if Shrugger gets into the backside, it's like, well, with, even with a shield out of out of sickness, is like how do you actually stop that that push coming in from that side? Yeah, it's this. I want to say it's going to come down to like which team makes the least mistakes. I mean, it, that's generally how Overwatch goes anyway. But yeah. you're seeing right now, awesome guys getting ready to jump. He knows he wants to get up on that right side because they have to deal with the Zenyatta. They have to get rid of the seventy six because if they can protect Pine, you assume that Pine and the Zenyatta should be decent enough to deal with Shrugger. But they have to respond. If they can get kills on the supports right now, you, you have to protect Pure and Ninja Nick more so than you have to worry about killing um, Starkey and Pine and Beyond. Because if your defense goes, if those three players go down, like at all, then your defense starts falling apart and you wind up trickling spawns. If Awesome Guy gets in on Clockwork though right now, which it looks like he wants to, they should be in a decent spot to take another push. But how do you kill any of them? Like. If you're discorded, like he's look at Austin guy, 50 HP right when he jumped up top. Like you yeah. have a discord, you have a damage amp soldier, and then the amount of healing they have around you. I don't see Nano Hana or Austin guy even really picking someone up unless somehow Spice mess something up majorly. Like they just miss shots that they should 100% hit. Yeah, that's true, I guess, too. The thing is that eventually they'll be okay because they'll have the drop the beat to initiate true, through. True. I, I like. I don't expect this push to go well from them after seeing how much damage Awesome guy just took from that soldier 76, but. You're right, like they're they really don't have a good way to get up there. I would have liked for them to have speed boosted up this ramp or up the staircase at some point. They haven't really tried it yet. They've been pushing that upper area, and the upper area is really hard to push, as you saw, or like as they saw. But now this is their second attempt, and they realize what's going on, like they understand the defensive setup. The thing is though, they know it's that the ults. Yeah, it's like the ults okay. are gonna come down to it. If Nanohana gets a good dragon blade, they can win. And that's like I mean that's cliche to say, but they have to kill they have to kill Ninja Nick, and like that's all that they have to worry about is eventually killing Ninja Nick, and they have to worry about getting their drop the beat because drop the beat against the team without it is like super detrimental to the team without it. Like you don't need to kill everything, you know. Like if a Winston comes in with you with buffed up armor, like if your whole team is armored, suddenly Clockwork's damage is gone. Like the Winston's damage is a lot lower. It's just a matter of target prioritization, and I mean, that's more or less what this game comes down to. And even, like, if you get a Primal Rage, I feel like, on Awesome Guy, if you just knock them off the ledge or disrupt them for a little bit of time, it allows the rest of your team, like Biome and Pine, to actually push through the top side because they don't have as much pressure on Biome's shield. 
from Clockwork. So it actually creates an opening for like, him dying. Clockwork. Actually, just made space for them to get the kill on Shane. So while it wasn't the greatest death from the Winston's, like they just traded Winston's, and that's probably better than you expected if you were Luxury Watch there. But now Pine's just shooting from behind. Like he's just now he's dead. Clockwork gets a kill. The defense is actually looking really strong here. I, I like doubted it, but I didn't realize how hard it would be for them to deal with at 76. I almost wouldn't mind a D.Va, but I don't know if they're going to switch it up. I think D.Va would I be mean, a really good pick. Even a Roadhog in here, if you speed him up and he hooks someone off that high ledge, that yeah. would complete, even if you take a support, or if you take Clockwork, the, probably the biggest priority, that is an immediate like guaranteed one fight, assuming you haven't lost anyone yet, because that's a huge chunk of their damage. Yeah, but like, look at what they're fighting into right now. Like, they're going to have such a hard time taking this fight. They should go in here and just try to bait out ults, because they know that they're super far behind, but they're actually pretty close in the support ults. Clockwork, super out of position here, though, or just caught with his pants down. I'm surprised that he was able to, that Winston was able to get that much space. The good news from them, though, is that they baited out the trance, they baited out the Winston ult, they baited out the aimbot, and they baited out the dragon blade. So they put themselves in a really good spot for this next fight. I am assuming they did it on purpose. They knew that they were behind. Like, just very structured play from them. And it puts them in a decent position for this next fight, because as long as they can deal with Ninja Nick... They should be okay because they don't have a really good way to burst people during a black hole or a graviton with the transcendence coming out from Starkey. With Nano, he actually committed his Dragon Blade too in that fight. Yeah, I mean it's Nano's worth it. Trans. It's worth it there. And see, nothing's dying in this black hole or this transcendence has rather. No energy. There's like, what, was that 19? Yeah, but that's that goes back to them not really having the best down. And here now they just have to find this mercy. And there it is. Like, Starkey is actually insane. I, I haven't even been... Like, I never watch him because the camera's never on him. But I keep seeing his name pop up in the kill feed. He got a kill before on the Winston. He just got another kill on the Winston. He killed their Zenyatta at the beginning of that fight. I don't think Pure was even there when that fight started. And because he died to Starkey. And then he just kills Ninja Nick right now. So he's doing more work than I think any Zenyatta should. But you saw the strength of their comp there in just, like, what happens when you have ults. Because... Even if they had gotten the res off there, they don't have a good comp to res. Like, you don't want to res a 76 into a team. The Winston's okay. Zarya, you don't really want to res either. It just shows the weakness of the res. They never actually used res on defense. So you could, like, argue, did you really need the Mercy? And I guess that that's my thinking when I see Mercy's on defense is if you don't get it off, then did you was it worth it, you know? I think that's harsh, though, like, at least for this situation, because, I mean, I feel like Mercy was one of the, the integral parts to make that soldier work. Like, yes, yes, Lucio yes, yes, for sure, for sure. Yeah, you can speed him away, but he doesn't have, like, nearly enough damage. I, I, I agree, though, it's like... It's just, well, it's just like, you, you feel it now, you feel it now when, like, they, all they had to do was drop the beat, and then you lost. But I think that they could have even been more, and I, I think teams should start doing this and they don't, is like, you should just start trying to soak damage to build your drop the beat against comps like this because it's so good. Even if they had res and the res had gotten off or something, they could have just used drop the beat and immediately just all in on Ninja Nick. And then what? Like, how do you even beat that? So I think that like, in some way, you have this massive team fight counter in the Mercy, but they're not running a team fight oriented strategy on the side of Luxury Watch. Like you want res to counter Black Hole or Graviton rather, but you don't want to have to res when your team's like split up, which is what they're running. Um, I agree that I agree that the Mercy was good. I mean, I definitely agree that the Mercy did work, but could it have been an Ana maybe? Like could Clockwork have just been playing McCree maybe? I, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm focusing too much on the comp, but I feel like they had such a good position and it all fell apart just because the alts came up from the side of luxury watch and no matter what or no matter how well they played i think that this was inevitable in the sense that that drop the beat was always going to give them the edge that they needed and they never really had a comp that could partner well with the black hole like there was never a scenario where that black hole was going to win them a team fight and that it was, was a comp based off of like holding I, I think it was a comp that they made my well i mean assuming this line it's like thought, a defensive they, comp it's just like i want to live and yeah and they went into it realizing that we're not going to actually hold the point because like you're completely right in the mercy like i think we're both right which is the weird part is that it's you have mercy there to make the comp work with clockwork but at the same time mercy's ult 
isn't that effective because if you're gonna die at this point you're not dying together and you're not gonna get a good res off for it because half your team is like designed yeah because like half your team is designed to die and half of them are designed to live and like that and like the same thing like your comp is good at delaying like they delayed a shit ton like them getting kills was really hard and maybe that's the play i like maybe i'm thinking too much but you wind up in this spot where you just use like you have you still have res you still are close like sickness used graviton but that graviton was never going to do much because as long as starkey had trans they were going to be fine and unless you combo it with a like dragon blade you're not going to get many kills assuming that there's like no shield because they're running double shield on the side of luxury watch so like the winston can block damage the reinhardt can block damage the Lucio can amp the heals that can out that can like out heal the 76 damage like there was never really a time where that black hole or the graviton was ever going to do much but it was the shields were always there to keep people up so like this was kind of like a time bomb comp I think from luxury watch like eventually they were going to just hit Q and win and that was that was like their win condition like I don't think any I don't think there was ever a scenario where splice should have full held them given the fact that they had like three or four ults at the same time on the side of Luxury Watch. Let me ask you then. So if Sickness went Roadhog there, do you think the Zarya was integral to actually holding this point this long? Or do you think a switch up like Roadhog or... I think if you're going to switch the... Different? I think if you're going to switch the Roadhog, you like switch the Genji or something. Okay. Because I think... I Like I don't mind the Roadhog in general. I think Roadhog's good, especially against like Winston comps and just like McCree centric. Uh, it's It's a good hero. It's just... It needs positioning and you want heroes that don't like Zarya killing a Zarya is like hard like in general in this game if you don't have your team with you if she's not discorded if you're not all focused firing her like I don't think sickness died up until this point like that was his first death and that was mostly because they just got overran but you their comp was good for what it was but it the fact that like the alts were so much more effective for the, like there's like i guess there's multiple layers of this game you have the micro level which is you're just going to use your spells and your aim and i think on the side of splice they have way better micro abilities like you have the healing station from the 76 you have the blink and the deflect to keep the genji alive you have shields to keep genji and winston alive you have the shields and the a lot of heal for the winston like they can all live forever but on the side of their ultimates, the transcendence isn't that good with the way that they were set up. Because like the Zenyatta is on one side, the rest of the team's on another. The, the aimbot's not that good because there's two shields on the side of Luxury Watch. The Winston ult, I mean, it's a Winston ult, but they have McCree, they have Tran- they have like Discord orb. It's never going to be that good. Your res isn't really that good because your team split up again. And like you have Dragon Blade. I mean, Dragon Blade's generally always good, and Black Hole is generally always good, and Graviton's always good, but that's not enough you know like they come in on the side of luxury watch they have dropped the beat the armor just gives you so much room your entire team can get in for free and then you just overrun this comp that's reliant on like a shorter fight like if you're running genji winston zarya you want the fight to be over generally quicker than not because your shields have to come back off cooldown like everything in that regard but once you put the armor on their whole team suddenly the winston gets in on the 76 and the zenyatta and it puts them in a bad spot the mercy's in a bad spot the mccree has extra health to deal with the genji like the trans comes in counters the black hole they actually can't kill anything in your black hole like the alt game and the macro game from the side of luxury watch was always going to trump that of splice as long as like there was no massive mistakes which there weren't so it's like interesting in that regard and i still think that splice is in a decent position but i don't know if i like 76 anymore and he's staying on it because how do you really defend the streets with a 76 like awesome guy is going to be all over you now and i guess that that's all right did he live and he just hasn't switched i think he died and he just hasn't switched but yeah like they still they're still in a good spot to fight because they have the primal rage they can delay the cart they still have the res they can delay the cart but I think that you need to get clockwork off of the 76 just to make your reses even better. Also, I don't know, like Reap. I wanted to say Reaper just because you're, you're expecting Austin got to jump into the back line, right? Um, or like a McCree to at least flashbang to give your supports a chance to live. Because if the supports are jumped on, they're going to be really tough. And you can see Shrugger as well trying to go straight to the back line, which they killed the Zen. That worked out. But yeah, I mean, at this point, you're just trying to burn the clock. But then that's what I mean, like. I, Reaper's kind of wonky. Um, I don't not know how to switch is here to it. I guess because he just wants to kill Shane. But they're running... Their comp still right now really doesn't have that much... It doesn't make sense to me, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Like, 
on the side of Splice. You have a 76. You don't have Lucio. So you have like these three squishy heroes that want to sit in the back and like heal. But like you're putting so much work, you have to get so much work out of Sickness's bubbles. But like you're having, you have a Zarya that can't speed boost. So like your whole team is just crawling at this point. Like 76 can sprint, but your Mercy can't, your Zenyatta can't. And like I'm expecting you're just gonna see Luxury Watch just run them over. Because anytime that they get a pick, they can just keep chasing. Because the Lucio will just come in with the speed boost and like run them down. We did have a res though. Yeah, and Engineer gets a res off, but he reses. I don't know. Look at clock. Like, see Clockwork here. Clockwork's like just popped his aimbot. Doesn't get anything done. There's two shields in front of him. He got two kills uh, when he's on the high ground with it. Oh but... yeah, he got the. I think he, yeah, he killed the Lucio. But like, yeah, I mean, even now it's like, well, what are you doing in this position? Because you got you won that fight because of res. Well, now you don't have it. And, they and the, there's like there's another thing here that I think a lot of people. I realize this in my pub sometimes, and like I'll call it out. But like they don't have anything to block a Earth Shatter on the side of Splice. Sure. Like when you're not running, when the Winston's not in front of the. That was a pretty bad Earthshatter from Beyond. Like he definitely could have held that a little bit longer and gotten more value out of it. But it's really it's it's a nice feeling when there's no way for you to not get a good Earthshatter off. <laughs> like you can just walk in and anything on your screen's instantly gonna get stunned because all you have to worry about is the bubbles at that point from the Zarya and the uh, Winston. Actually, a really good point too. There's there's nothing like there's a lot of power in Reinhardt and just his presence, not necessarily a shield and what he can do, but his presence of being there, like a potential earth shatter, the, the fact that you have to worry about the shield. If you get too close, you can get swung on. Mm -hmm. What does Spice have? I mean, now Shane has finally switched, but they didn't really have anything that was kind of like a formidable force that would let Luxury Watch like kind of second guess themselves. It was just like, all right, well we can push. And that, yeah, and that's like the strength of running the Lucio against no Lucio is like, how do you even like how do you even scare Splice here? And like they're you can tell that they're playing they're not on the same page right here. Like, they go in with this black hole, but there was no follow up. Like, they don't actually have anyone to follow up on this black hole. I don't, like, it doesn't matter who lived or who died there. The only way they were getting kills is if Shane went in and swung. Because Clockwork just spawned his McCree. He doesn't have his ult. He's dealing with Awesome Guy at the same time right now. It looks like he just killed him. Trigger's on the Reaper now. Finally, like, they're running a Reaper because it's better on the last point, I would say, than the second point because you don't have to worry about trekking back to the cart. Like, the speed doesn't matter anymore because you're going to get to the cart no matter what. But that black hole, like, the Graviton there to delay the cart, it's not that good because you don't have any follow-up damage to it. But, like, the pressure's on them now because they don't even have, like, the cart doesn't even really have to go that far anymore for Luxury Watch. They just need to walk in. It's a good res from Ninja Nick, but... If you have to die to get your res off, it's not like it's it's not as good, you know. Like you you just traded it, you traded like half of your heals for a res, and you're seeing the weakness in their comp is like you just res the McCree, you res Azaria with no bubbles. Like when you res Azaria, she doesn't keep her charge. So now there's just a Zarya with no charge in front of you and a McCree, and like what are you actually gonna do with those heroes? It's it's really hard to explain why res isn't that good all the time but you're just seeing the weakness of it here when you res your team you have to trade your life for it and then you just get run over anyway and even beyond he had two earth shares back to back and that just shows like how much freedom he had to not even need to shield to just swing yeah and that and i like yeah that's insane to yeah. have like a back-to-back -back fight with earth shatter which is such a game turning ultimate or game changing ultimate and like going back to the point you said of what do they have to block it nothing yeah, uh, when every earth shatter is a good earth shatter, it's like the game. The game is too easy, I think, at that point. Like even in your pubs, if you're playing a Reinhardt and the enemy team doesn't have a Reinhardt, like you can just keep chaining your ultimates. Like a speed boosted Reinhardt is pretty scary. Like even like Zarya can't really deal with him well. There's too much pressure on this team to perform without the right heroes. I think for Splice, like they're running, they're against a Reinhardt and a Winston, and then like they only have they like never ran a Reaper. So like how are you ever really going to kill the tanks like these tanks need to die but it's they, how do you they do had it? a reaper at the end but it was like too late like i'm thinking back to the chain events chain of events that led to that that game ending and it was the fact that they lost in the second phase right to the second point towards the end like they got earth shattered freely even though it wasn't a good earth shatter mm -hmm. and then off the back of that fight it was immediately another earth shatter fight like they were forced to use the res just to have a second chance to hold and they weren't really given an opportunity to play with the high ground with the potential flanking out of that one. I, I think, you know, we always talk about casting wise as momentum. We probably over exaggerate it sometimes, but that was a lot of momentum there that just completely didn't allow them to really, uh, you know, like finally put up a formidable defense, like a good hold. Yeah, I mean, look at it this way too, in that when you have 
like let's assume that supports are even right like all support alts are at the same rate like everyone gets trans at the same time someone else gets res if you're ever at a disadvantage with your mercy like if you're not pumping reses out you need to just keep pumping reses out you need to keep pop pumping transes out and like one of the biggest mistakes you can make i think sometimes as support or just as a team in general is like not playing around the fact that you have advantage in that moment and they never had the advantage on Splice after they lost the first point. Right. Like, what really should have happened when they were getting pushed on the first point is Sickness should have just used Black Hole. He did. He got six of them. They couldn't do anything with it. I mean, it goes back to that, but they don't. They never had a way to get back into the game because if you're popping res, but the other team has dropped the beat, and then you, like, res your whole team, and then they get fucking, like, they all use drop the beat at the same time, then you can't protect like you're you're gonna die again and if you res your team and they pop transcendence you're gonna die again and if you have to drop if you have to res and then pop transcendence like you just burn two ults and then you're gonna lose the next fight no matter what mo nine times out of ten so mercy i i like hate on mercy a lot in this in like this analysis but i just want people to understand like as good as res is it's not as good as people make it seem like it's not as much of a game changer. It can be a game changer. I like it more on offense, and I like it. I like how they paired it with the Farah, and they abused the air game in that matchup. But you really saw the weakness here when you run comps that aren't meant to be resed. And I think that that's really what it comes down to: is like, is your comp one that you want to res, and does your comp need a secondary ult to stay alive? You don't want to have to res a McCree and a seventy six. You don't want to have to res like a. Zarya with no charge. You want to get your reses off on your Winstons, your McCrees, like one or two heroes at a time with a comp like this because you can't rely on your team all living like together at this it's it's like this weird lineup thing where like a res Reinhardt is scary. You get a Reinhardt, he has full shield again, and like that's incredibly scary and in value. Even Diva too. Yeah, Diva. Like well, Diva is weird because I yeah, you get your suit back. Do you get your suit back? Yeah, you get your suit You get back. your suit back. So like stuff like that's really scary, but Tracer can blink out, Reaper can shift, like, some heroes just do really poorly. In, like, if you're on offense, I think it's good, but, like, you saw right here that they never made the res work. They ran a Mercy a majority of the game, but they never really got what they wanted from it in the sense of the res. And if you're not getting the reses off, was it really worth the pick? And I think that that's the important thing to take from this match, specifically. I think even something that kind of goes along with that, because um, we, we talked about initially what is splice going to use to charge support ultimates because initially they had like a reinhardt that was it right and they don't have like a like a roadhog let's just say to charge up like a mercy ultimate um i, I was trying to think back to the zarya in particular here is that you have a zarya but was it a ne necessity i feel like a lot of teams kind of like bank on the the idea of a black hole or a graviton surge pulling people together and winning off of that but in that comp there i wonder well, what would a, a Roadhog offer to, offer to you? Like a Roadhog, Roadhog Reinhardt combo? Because you have a lot, you have a big health pool you can heal, right? But most importantly, you can afford to use those Mercy Reses onto one or two people because there's no point in going for the big six-man res. And the Zarya was only, I guess, useful for the for the Genji that they were running initially out of Shrugger, but he switched onto a Reaper eventually, and that still didn't even accomplish too much. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's... It's I mean, it, Zarya. Zarya is just like in a, Zarya's in like a weird spot. I would say because I feel like Zarya is never weak. Like you never feel like you're not doing enough. It's just sometimes you feel like, like you always feel, when you play that hero or when the hero is being played, you always feel like it's doing something. You know, like you always save somebody's life. You always get your charge up. Like you never die. So you feel like you're playing well because you never die. Your teammates are alive. But when it comes down to it, if you're not getting I think it was okay on the defense. Like they ha it, it helped them stall. But I guess back to the point, like, could there have been a better hero to utilize the trend like the harmony orb more effectively? Because you're getting the mercy res from the damage boost on Clockwork 76. So like do you really need the heals there? I guess not really. But if you're not getting the trans the harmony orb heals in, then you pro like even a junk rat might not have been bad. Like I, I agree with the Roadhog. It's just once the Roadhog gets on the point on that map, it's hard to make it work. Because you have to like get back up top, and if you can't get back up top, Pine's just gonna shoot you in the head a oh, few no, times. Oh no, no, no! Oh, sorry. I mean, like later. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The second phase. Like, well, they weren't running. Well, they weren't running a Mercy, Mercy right? And they weren't running a Lucio until the very end. And you, some heroes rely on Lucio, I think. And I think that people aren't like 
people had this notion in their head that like, oh, 100% speed increase is like ginormous and we should really always run Lucio. And then now that Lucio is like a little bit worse, we shouldn't be running it. But there's some heroes that are just terrifying with speed boost. It doesn't matter how much speed boost it is. It's just you want that extra movement speed because a Reaper without speed boost, like, all right, I'm just going to walk at you and I'm going to meat shot you. Like, it's not going to happen, you know? So, like, you can't really run Reaper without Lucio. And you don't really want to run McCree so much without Lucio because now you're just a McCree with 200 health. Your Reinhardt's also not as scary, because if Reinhardt goes in and is swinging, you can just kite in with the other Lucio. Like, the ability to out-kite the other team and play the positional game with your own Lucio, I think, is too good not to run it, even with the nerf. I think that there's some points on maps where you can get away with it, where you don't necessarily need to disengage or need to fight. But I think stubbornly staying on Mercy or Zenyatta, because you have ult for the second point of some maps, can be very game losing in some ways and i think that we saw that here like splice had res and they kept saving it you know like they never got a good one off but they always had it so in their heads they're like oh i have res i have res let's get a good res but if you never get that good res then you get ran over and you're gonna get run over anyway because there's a lucio healing of winston that's speed boosted running at you the reinhardt's running at you pines running at you like i, I don't know it's it's, it's funny that you mentioned lucio like that too because it seems like He's good if the enemy team doesn't have one, but if they have one, he's not as good. Because of how game-changing speed can be in the right competition. Well, it's, and it's also the thing of, like, teams are having trouble with Ana right now, and, like, you have to realize, like, Ana's good, but there's also ults that build decently fast, like, just as fast as Ana ult. And I'm still waiting for some team to, like, pick May on defense and just do it, because I think that that's, like, the easiest counter to it. But it's the same thing with the Lucio. It's, like, you see these teams win without the Lucio, and you're like, oh, I can do that. But you have to realize why they're winning without the Lucio, and, like, how they're winning without the Lucio. And, like, you need to be able to make those one-man reses. Like, if you can just go in, your Winston dies, res the Winston, play around another Winston life, like, treat it like a, just a second respawn. Like, stuff like that's good, but... Yeah, like, you see, too, the drop to beat, the armor is so good at getting in on the enemy Mercy... That, like, it doesn't matter that they have res because you can use the advantage of the armor to just make the Mercy have to use res poorly or just die. And it, it's a weird mix where if you can protect your Mercy well enough and, like, waste the entire drop the beat, then that's fine. Or if you can bait the drop the beat with the Graviton Surge, then that's also fine. But Splice kind of mismanaged their ults, I guess, and they used Black Hole offensively, knowing that Starkey had Transcendence. So Starkey was always just going to pop Transcendence and counter the Graviton. And then when the drop the beat came out, they had no answer to it on that first point. But yeah, like, I don't know how you deal with a speed boosted Winston without your own speed boost. It's, like, super hard to work around. And, I, like, even just in an aim game, like, if a McCree has speed and one doesn't, like, the McCree that has speed should, in theory, have an easier time aiming, hitting his shots, like, surviving, getting around corners, like, stuff like that. It's it's just an enabler hero. It's not so much that it's, like, a great hero and, like, speed boost is, like, overpowered. It's just it makes every other hero better. And I don't know that Mercy makes every other hero better in the same light as even a 70% slightly nerfed Lucio does. And, and the way that, like, Mercy used to be used... So, like... I say back in the day, but like in the beta phases, it was always like Mercy Lucio combo because Zen was like too weak at the time, 150 health, and it was just too squishy in general. But it was always like a Mercy res into a sound barrier mm -hmm. to allow heroes that can't survive a res or like survive after being res a chance to survive after being res. And I feel like these days we don't see anything being comboed off the back of a Mercy res anymore. Like, well, because you don't want to do it. Well, yeah, because you don't want to do it on defense. Like, you don't want to have to pop res and drop the B at the same time. And I think that that's really what I'm getting at is that Mercy on offense, I feel, is just safer. Or it's it makes more sense to me because if your team goes in, you kill some, a few people, you get the res off, you just keep the fight going. Like, here's a good example. And I always wind up in... The, I've, seen, I've wound up in this position so many times in pubs. Like, you'll be on Gibraltar, right? And, like, you'll be pushing the hangar. Or, like, even just the first point, And you'll get, like, a pick. And then one person on your team will die. And you're like, shit, like, if that person just lived, we'd be fine. And then, like, that's when you want to res. You know, like, get that person back. Take your free kill and, like, counter it with your own res so you can, like, get your numbers advantage back in your favor. And I think that that's when Mercy is the strongest. As opposed to, like, 
oh, I'm going to try to res my entire team or I'm going to try to res four people at once. Because if you res your four people at once, if the fight wasn't already going in your favor, you're going to lose anyway again because now your mercy's dead. Your whole team is grouped up somewhere. Like they're, they're, They lost the position battle because they were standing still while they were dead. I think that mercy is strongest when she can keep a fight going but not stopping a fight from being like like she's not good at countering a lost fight she's good at heart keeping like momentum, yeah just like keeping the momentum in your favor at all times like you run, jump in with your winston maybe the winston gets the zenyatta down to half health and then he dies you res the winston the winston goes back on the zenyatta and then suddenly you're like that zenyatta is like god i just had to fight that winston twice right. like that's when it's scary and like you don't want to if you can res your entire team on offense and then drop the beat like that's really scary but if you do that on defense you what you delay the cart 20 seconds you know so that's really where the game gets a little bit more meta and like analytical from my perspective anyway but i think that mercy on defense in my head is way riskier and way harder to execute than one on offense for that like particular reason in that you have to be able to combo with it you have to be able to make the most of it and you don't really want to, you don't need to gain momentum on defense if you want to fight already, because you should just have the momentum. I don't know. I think there's also a mind game factor behind running a Mercy, maybe defensively, where, like, the offensive team has to commit ultimates to, to get that wipe, and then they have to realize, well, we still need ultimates to win the fight off the back of that. Well, like, so what's, yeah, so what's interesting does. about that, too, is that they never ran Azaria on Luxury Watch. And... The reason why Mercy's good is because she counters those massive wombo combos. But when you're running a comp that doesn't wombo combo, yeah. then you're not... You, like, it makes Mercy's life a lot harder. If Awesome Guy gets a kill, and he lives, and suddenly you're like, should I res him on defense? But then, if, if like, he doesn't get another kill immediately, then you have like a five second window where one person's dead, no one else died, do I want to keep resing? Like, should I have res that first person? Now someone else died, what do I do? And like... You keep running away from this problem in that you don't there's never a time where multiple people dying at once so it's hard like it's really hard like sometimes like a team will pop high noon and you're like all right guys just go die to the high noon like go get kills and die to the high noon like that's when you want to res but like teams aren't doing that right now and teams aren't used to the mercy because they've just been using it for so long without it and you're seeing a lot of mercies die after resing where i feel like in closed beta they were protecting them a lot better and like keeping people in positions like the game had evolved in such a way that people were used to running mercy all the time and they knew like i need someone on the roof i need someone on this ledge so that when my mercy reses they always have an escape and like i should never be getting more than a four man res because that fifth person needs to be the escape route for the mercy that got the res off and we're not seeing that right now i don't know if it's just like the new patch people aren't used to it they haven't like gotten back in that rhythm but we saw that evolution during closed beta and i expect to see it again teams protecting the mercy having someone to fly to like having that outlet always well, there's a... even even changes made to her that like prevented her from be... well it's funny there, there's changes made to prevent her from being like that but changes also made to help her be like that with her garden angel not having cooldown mm -hmm. but also her ultimate charges slower at the same time where with the, when the ultimate used to be you know a lot quicker you could res one or two people and then even have it up still for that same fight because you got so much healing in but they kind of tweaked it in a way that you can get a res in the fight to like win the fight, maybe not a huge res, you know, with like the entire team, but you'll get like two people up. Mm -hmm. But then you can't heal a Roadhog who's on one HP and get your ultimate back again. Yeah, so it's, it's a lot less room. There's for, yeah, less wiggle room for teams. Yeah, uh, the hero's good. Don't get me wrong. I don't know, but I don't know that the nerf to Lucio makes Mercy that much more appealing. That you should be just not running Lucio. I don't know. I I find it a lot easier too to think about the way, like think about the way to win a fight too is like on defense if your lucio is going to die maybe he just pops sound barrier to live because he needed to it like helps your team delay the cart better like there's just so many better ways i think to play around drop the beat and transcendence and there are to play against red around oh, res on defense i don't know i don't want to keep talking about that though it's just we're getting a little deep into the yeah it's all good it was just it was just interesting to like I don't know, discuss that a little bit more to actually like think it out and theorycraft it in a, in a situation. Like even though the game might not have given us the opportunity to do it, yeah. but it was For interesting sure. to, like, to see like a, a cause and effect. And I think teams still at this rate are really slow to switch to comps once they see it that necessarily counter what we had or what the other team had. I think 
teams are still kind of set in their ways of like we pick this comp and we want to use it and also waging the the, the value of switching off when you're almost at an ultimate like we saw Na uh, nanohana do it like he was on i think it was on fair and he had actually yeah i think he's like on fair and he had barrage available but he's like no i'm switching to genji because we need genji right now yeah and there was a match today i think it was when we were yeah, casting like someone just Reinhardt. popped a someone no, like someone just dropped a dragon ult so they could switch to winston like yeah, yeah, you just true. you have to like make those calls but when you're on support it feels a lot bigger because you feel like you should like support ults are so big that you feel like you shouldn't be wasting them but again like if you had if they had switched off the lucio i think they're if, if they had switched off the mercy to a lucio they would have been in a better position later on but yeah i mean that was that that was splice versus luxury I don't watch know how long this has been like an hour yeah like an hour and for like 10. a 20 minute game yeah it happens that 17 minute game it took us an hour it's fine but yeah that was that thanks for watching like subscribe follow <laughs> later